Okay, it'll five. It's time to start. Um, so once again, I'd like to thank the person who's very kindly sponsored uh, our Alsha Shear on McGillis and who is, uh, wants me to try and recruit new sponsors because he thinks we should be doing this every single week or an Alsha Shear on the Chumash. So if you would like um, to sponsor a Shear for a, a loved one, a parent or a grandparent, then please uh, just send me an email to yy at rabbiyy.com. Oh, let's get rid of that background because I don't think you're going to see my, let's go back to normal. Choose, I've learned the trick of doing a great background. So here we go. Okay, so there it is, yy at rabbiyy.com. And we will be more than honored uh, to see a shear starting after Shavuos every week, a shear on the Al Shaka Kodesh on the Parsha in the name of somebody you want to remember. Okay, uh, now last week uh, we got to some very exciting. Uh, insights into Rus, Kabbalistic insights into Rus. And you remember that Rus is um, going to be, Nomi is going to find and has found that, uh, that her daughter-in-law is actually uh, Mekash Keshes, uh, is the Hebrew word that the Alshuk uses, which inside her, her womb, I think Mekash Keshes means rattling, like uh, rattling about. There is a soul rattling about in there, and it's the soul of her dead husband. We're going to... Uh, look uh, a little bit deeper. I, I've only got one more uh, week to go, so there's two choices, um, and I think you're gonna have to, I hope you're gonna forgive me, if I'm going to leap over uh, uh, Rusa's refusal to be dissuaded by Nomi, what Nomi was really trying to tell her. But once Nomi has uh, established the fact that uh, Rus is a, when she kisses her, that it's min beminoi, that her Jewish soul matches and finds another Jewish soul in this woman, and that of course is her son, and she realizes that that tradition that we had, that there was going to be from Moab and Ammon, there was going to be two precious souls, who, just one soul, an amazing thought, that one person can save an entire nation, don't go to war against Moab, don't kill Ammon, uh, Hashem tells Moshe, one person from each is going to come and they need to be saved for one person. Interesting to bear in mind that when Moshe Rabbeinu himself sends in spies, uh, which of course had disastrous consequences, but he says, he gives them various instructions, including to see if there is an eights. Go and look to see if there's an eights, a tree. Now the land of Israel is not the hugest land, it's not North America, but it's not tiny. I think it would be reasonable to expect there to be one or two trees, thousands of trees, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, no, find one tree. And an eights, as we know, is uh, is a euphemism for Itzadik. Um, an eitz al palgi mayim, it says in the first psalm, uh, a tree, a tzadik, who's, who's planted by a brook, which is the Torah. Um, one tzadik, and the tzadik was worried about was Eov. Well, had one tzadik been there, uh, when the, the, the Jewish people, the Dordea, the highest spiritual level, were going in to conquer the land of Israel, that one person could have prevented that conquest, which is a scary thought, or maybe an encouraging thought that one person, um, a you or a me, could make all the difference between um, something bad, Chas Hashanah, happening to Klaus and something good. It's after all what we say when it comes to Rosh Hashanah, imagine the scale's perfectly balanced and along comes one person. Okay, so there are two one persons, but in, in her, her daughter-in-law, Nomi is able to identify the one person, and that one person is, of course, um, her son. Uh, who's going to be the next link in the Mashiach. So I want to uh, take you, if you've got your, I hope you've all got, are able to quickly grab, if I talk a little bit, you'll be able to quickly grab your Rus and turn to chapter Aleph and Posuk Kof Aleph. This is the return. As I'm missing out um, Rus's refusal to be dissuaded, she's on course to become Jewish. Nothing's going to budge her. And after Naomi has tried to dissuade her, well, at least three times, which is the basic... Um, um, blueprint for the halacha, which says that's what you have to do if somebody wants to become Jewish. Dissuade them three times. We learn it from from Nomi. I can see actually more than three times. However, that's the that's it's it's sufficient. She's determined, and uh, Nomi lets her come. Okay, let's uh, make some progress in Posak Aleph and Posak Aleph. Um, basically, she comes back to Yehuda. Everybody says, "This is Nomi." Why are you calling me Nomi? Um, um, instead, Hashem Onobi, Hashem's done. 
has 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 brought judgment on me for things I've done wrong. The Tosh of Nomi Verush. So Nomi and Rus come back. The Tosh of Nomi Verush, Hamavia Domo by Tess, Kalosa, her daughter in law, and Imo um, with her, Ishova, Misti Imo, they come back from Sneov, Behemo Bo, Beis Lechem, and they come to Beis Lechem, but the Kilis Katsira Sarim, Sarim, and at the time of the, the, time of the harvest. Now, the Alshech is a bit perplexed by this. Um, and of course, being the Alshech, he often, as we've seen many times before, when he asks his questions with his very intriguing ability to spot uh, things that we should have spotted ourselves had we been looking carefully, he often does so with humor. And he does so here as well. But Toshev Nomi. So look at Kof Base again. And that's what the Alshech said. Toshev Nomi. Hine has Kareno Shiba Nomi Verus, whom you sir. To say that Nomi and Riss have come back is extra. We know that already. It's already told us they've come back. But Toshev Nomi Verus. Didn't we read that in the previous book? Okay. Shari Nemelama just said that. And number two, he wants to point out, the king, Omru Hamavia. And it says that Nomi is a Moavia, a Moabite. Oh, really? Oh, you mean she's not Irish? I mean, we know this. Why is it saying something which is so painfully obvious? The whole book up to now has been stressing and explaining what the story of Rusa Moabite is. It doesn't seem necessary to repeat it, and it seems to really um, detract from her coven. And in case you didn't know, um, her daughter-in-law is her daughter. It's her daughter-in-law. Oh, I see. Well, we know that. So again, look at the posse. The Tosh of Nomi Verus said that. Omavia, is she really? Um, Kalosa, her daughter-in-law. Mm, I think I remember that bit. Imo Bahoshov, Miste Moav, the Hema Bo Beislech. So why does it say that? So he's, he's, uh, I'll read a little bit of the Asher to you because I think it's absolutely fabulous. So he says, Ah, Kavonis Akosov. What the Post is really telling you is, and remember, this is written by Shmuel Novi. Laudia Hayisran Bahamila should consul Rus Baboy Bebeslech. It shows you the transformation and the greatness that Rus achieved when she comes to live in Eretz Yisrael and she comes to Beislechem in the heart of Yehuda, just outside Yerushalayim. Al Asher Hoya Loy Makodim, compared to what she was like before. Because if you if we look back a couple of sukim. When they leave, when the Nomi leaves with her from Steymoav, it says, Iker Naomi. Then the Iker, the main person, is Nomi. Ach, Rus Whereas Rus is, she's, you know, she's just almost like baggage. She's, the main thing is Nomi. Ki Adain Hoyasa because she's still a Moavia. So it says, the Toshav is telling us, not what we already know, something new. It's saying, but Tosh of Nomi, but Rus Amavia. Nomi with Rus, you know, she's like the Yiddish word as a Noch Schlepper, and a Moabite when they leave. They came back, but Tosh of. It's talking about what happened. Not talk. We know all this bit that they came back. It's telling you something more, something more deep. When they left, then, and she was a Moabite, then who comes first? Well, of course, Nomi comes first. But what happens next? And she's not yet converted. That's not yet converted according, remember what we learned two weeks ago, not yet converted according to the standard and the halakhic prescription that Nomi is going to recognize. And we talked about that two, the last two weeks, so I'm not going to repeat that. You can look at the, uh, I'm sure you review these, she and not all the time. Um, but, sorry, her only connection with Nomi is she's her daughter in law. So now look at the Posset. It's now telling you something different. But Tosh of Nomi, Verusamavia Kalosa. We said we know she, she's a Kalosa, but we're saying that her Rus's only greatness is expressed through a connection to Nomi, and that is the fact that she's a daughter in law. She's a Moabite, she's no greatness, and yet has not emerged. Kalosa. Fine. Her only greatness is that she happens to be related through marriage to Nomi. But when she converts, which is now, when they come to Beis Lechem, also Bamaila Gam Rus, then Rus goes up in Madriga too, 
to be the equivalent of Moabim. And that's why it says, Imo hashobo mi Moab, now they've come back from Stay Moab, vehemo bo'u, and now they're both together. Them. Before it splits them up. At the beginning of the Pasuk, Vitosh of Nomi. Nomi comes. And the Moabite, Rus. But now that Rus has become a Jew, then she's the equivalent of Nomi. Uh, 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 yeah, the equivalent of Nomi. That's incredible. She becomes great when she becomes a Jew. So this is interesting. Uh, this historically, when we were struggling to find out exactly what the problem was with Nomi rejecting, rejecting them, well, we saw the answer to that, two answers. But however, here, she's now become Jewish in a way that everybody will accept that this is a proper conversion. The point of dispute historically is going to be, but can she marry somebody who's, who's uh, kinda a Jew who's born a Jew, marry her? That's a different argument. But nobody's denying that she's converted to Judaism. And when she's converted to Judaism, she's seen as the equivalent. The Hemo Bo base lechem chilas ketir has earned. And Hemo come Bo base lechem but chilas ketir has Very interesting. The Hemo. And again, those of you who are getting into looking at the things the way the Alsha looks at the thing, you will, I guess, spot the, the, the inevitable and obvious question. And it says Hemo, which is the masculine, when it should say Heno, which would be the feminine. Because after all, we're talking about two women. But we're not. Remember what we said last week. When Nomi kisses Rus on the lips, we said, of course, that there is a, the Hashem breathed the soul into the first human being. And breathing that soul into the first human being was through the lips. When he, she kissed her on the lips, it was finding and discovering Kabbalistically, mystically, that inside this woman, her son's soul is there. Her son's masculine. When it says it in the masculine, it's hinting that Hamor, they came. Who, may, who came? Yeah, Nomi and Rus and Machlon. And her dead husband inside her body. That soul is already inside her body, uh, Mikashkesh, rattling or banging about, as it were, rattling about inside her womb. Interesting idea. Okay, now uh, let's go to. Perik Gimel. Now I'm skipping out tons, obviously, because this is Perik Aleph, and I'm going to go to Perik Base. I'm missing out the, as I said before, the whole story of uh, Rissa's refusal to, to give up. And let's just jump into Perik Gimel, because the next interesting thing I want to look at, which was the night, the, the title I gave you for tonight, Shear, uh, the strange, perplexing idea of Nomi saying to Rus, um, I would like you to go. And there's no other nice way to put this. Uncover Boaz's feet and get into his bed. Uh, that's what I'd like to concentrate on tonight. We already, if you remember last week, already said, remember all of the journeys or all of the links in the chain of the Mashiach are all m marriages, unions between men and women, uh, even if they're not marriages like Yehuda and Tomar, um, when it's sort of a yibum instead of a, a, a levirate marriage, instead of a proper marriage. But all of the the bringing together of man and woman to conceive another child, the next link in the chain of the Mashiach, they're all appalling. Remember I said to you, if somebody was to suggest the Mashiach, forget the term Mashiach, somebody was to suggest to you for a shida for one of your, uh, one of your uh, daughters, a fellow with the background of the Mashiach, you would say, absolutely not. And practically be extremely insulted that the suggestion was made in the first place. Okay, let's uh, move um, forward. Uh, Rus has become Jewish. They have no money. Rus goes into the fields. She's trying to, she's gathering up the, the corn pieces of wheat that are left by the harvesters. That's how poor she is. She's given up being a princess with all that that entails, servants and luxury, uh, to be a beggar effectively, uh, as long as she can be a Jewish beggar. And uh, collects the, the grain. It happens to be with Siata de Shema, she's in Boaz's field. It happens to be that Boaz is a relation of her mother-in-law's, of her dead husband's. It happens to be that Boaz could conceivably be the one who would do Yibum with Rus. But Nomi keeps her cards close to her chest at that point and just tells her to keep going back to that place. Boaz asks Rus about her background and our, her story and is extremely impressed. And remember, he notices her because she's a tsnua. 
who is that remarkably sneeristic young woman out in the fields? And of course, it turns out to be Ruth. Uh, the sneeristic young woman in the field is going to prove herself or seem to prove herself to be the exact opposite as the story carries on. Let's turn to Paul A to chapter Gimel now. Chapter Gimel. <coughs> Excuse me. So, Batamar Lo Naomi Chamosa. So, Naomi, who was her mother in law, now again, that's just in case, as the Ashik is going to point out, that you've forgotten that the relationship is mother in law. Mm -hmm. It says again, BT, my daughter. Hello, Abakesh Lo Manoach. Haven't I looked for you to have peace and tranquility? Ashar Yitiv Loch, which will be good for you. Um, Possit base. Ba'ata Hello, Boaz Medatai. Matata. He is somebody who is a relation of ours. Asher Chayis Es Narosov Hinehu Zare Es Gorin Asayim Halayla. This is the, it was the culmination of the harvest, is of course, there's a celebration, but they've finished the harvest. I think you have that in, have in every society. Rechatst. So go and make sure you're washed and beautified. Besamta Simlasech Olaich, be ready to Gorin, and put nice clothes on. And go down to the to the to the field, um, at the threshing floor, I think they call it. And when they're sitting and eating, wait, don't keep yourself hidden till they started the banquet. And when he lies down to go to sleep, find out where is his tent or wherever, whatever uh, room or wherever he's going to be sleeping in is. Go and uncover his feet. The shachaft and lie down. And he'll tell you what to do. Which, you know, what does that mean? And she says, Whatever you tell me to do, I'm going to do. So, uh, the Alshik has uh, four questions to ask in this. Now, before we go into the four questions, let's just remind ourselves of something we hinted at last week in the Shia. This is going to be. A test. It's a test for us. And it's a big test for us. But all of the tests that are big in the history of Klal Yisrael and on the journey of the Mashiach are exactly that. Big tests. Uh, Avram, who is Mr. Chesed, to take his son, his only son, and cut his throat. That's why it's called the Kedus Yitzchok. It was a test for Avram. But it was not a test for Yitzchok, because Yitzchok was quite happy to do this. But for Mr. Chesed, who was, who was a front man of Vino, that was a big test. For Yaakov, with Mr. Emes, to cheat his brother, steal his blessing, steal his blessing, that's a test. For Tsipora, who is the Snua par excellence, to dress as a prostitute and, and seduce her husband, uh, sorry, her, well, actually, uh, husband-to-be through Yibam, but her father-in-law, Yehuda, that's a big test. For Rus to be asked what Rus is about to be asked to do is a big test. That's going to be important. Let me read to you a bit of the Asha. I have to take off my glasses for obvious reasons. One reaches a certain age when taking off the glasses is absolutely essential. Um, good. And the Asha has got four questions. Okay. Uh, the, the four questions are on Posik uh, Aleph, so I better repeat that for you. But Tamerlo Naomi Hamoisa. And her mother-in-law, Nomi, the mother-in-law of Ruz, says to her, Beatty, my daughter, hello, Avakish Loch Manoach. You know that I'm looking for your peace, for your uh, serenity. Asha Yitiv Loch, that will be good for you. And here the answer says some very interesting stuff. Well, here's the questions. Let's do the questions. One, the term alone, Naomi, Hamoisa. And Nomi, her mother-in-law, said, We should really think about this, he says. Milo Yoda, ki shama Naomi, behi Hamoisa. Who doesn't know that her name was Nomi? And that she was her mother-in-law? Oh, it's got to remind us that's Nomi and the mother-in-law. Obvious question. Base. Oh, about Why does it add in the world, or, or why does it tell us that when Nomi spoke to Rus at this moment, she called her my daughter? And he writes, Ki in Sophic Kish Losis Libo Shmuel Hanobi Barua Kotcha and Likov Lon arrived for him, Sher in Sipa Behem Chivet. Uh, you have to bear in mind it's written by Shmuel and Obi, and there's no way that no, uh, Shmuel and Obi is not going to include in this words that don't teach us something, that aren't relevant and important to us. Yimo. V'oid v'omro halo. Now we've got, this is tricky in the Hebrew, so let's look at the postal again. V'tamalo na'omi, chamalisa biti. 
Hello, Abakishloch. Hello, Abakishloch. Did I not seek for you? It's an invitation to say, um, no, you didn't. Because it's, it's a rhetorical. Of course I did. Of course I promised you, Abakishloch, the Menoyach, and to give you that the things would be good for you. Doesn't seem to have worked out, says the Alshach. After all, she's poor. She's a beggar. Looks as though the promise has been broken. And I want to find you serenity that will be good for you. Could you have serenity that's not good for you? Those are the four questions the Alshach asks. Interesting questions. I think you would agree. Now, before we go on, let me just remind our, uh, us all of a, a crucial posit. Um, and the posit says, "As Hashem Elokecha, Tiro, you should fear the Lord your God." And we know that the word "s" al of sof, whenever it occurs in the Torah, "s" is a reboy. It means, apart from the thing that's being discussed in the posit, something else is included in the concept. And this is the famous uh, posit which stumped somebody called Shimon Amso. The famous rabbi who goes through all of the time, all the occasions when the Torah uses the word S and explains why the extra thing that's not stated explicitly in the Posit is, is, is hinted at by the word S to be included in the concept of the Posit until they came to the Posit as a shamala kekka to all. You should fear the Lord your God. Because who can you fear possibly as much as the Lord your God? And when Shimon Amasani came to this, uh, he was stumped and stuck and abandoned his life's work. And when he abandoned his life's work, his Talmudim said, how can you do this? To which he famously replied, Just like I would, he says, a, 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 there's a rhyme there, a, a poem, he said it poetically, just like I will be rewarded for my efforts, my drisha, that I put into this, I will be rewarded for having separated. Uh, myself from doing this. Good. It's a big thing to give up a life's work. L'shem shemayim. L'shem honesty. I'm stuck. Doesn't make sense. I'm stuck. Along came Rabbi Kivan famously said, oh, I know what the S refers to. It says you should fear somebody. Who should you fear as much as Hashem? That you're stuck at Rabbi Shimon Amzuni? You've got to fear Tomidi Chachamim. You've got to fear, you fear your teachers. You've got to fear your Rebbe's as much as you fear Hashem and Zbarach. Interesting idea. Why? Well, the obvious answer is because um, it's the same concept. But obviously, by definition, you've got to have it in your mind as a religious Jew, uh, a religious human being, that Hashem knows more stuff than you. Uh, how can you possibly say, well, I don't get it. I don't understand that. As the Chavaz Lovava says in the, in the third peric, you have to understand that everything that happens in the world happens precisely and exactly when Hashem wants it to happen in the world. Precisely. We were in Mitzrayim for 210 years, not a nanosecond longer and not a nanosecond shorter. It was 210 years exactly, because 210 years was exactly what was needed in order to cure the problem that caused us to be there in the first place. But not a nanosecond longer. Once the treatment was complete, then it was time to leave. But in that time, you could imagine a Jew say, why are we here? What's the point? You've got to know that Hashem calculates exactly. And you don't see it. And that's why, because I'll say that when the Mashiach comes, Tisha B'Av will be the happiest day in the year, because then we'll see how all the pieces of the jigsaw fit into place. Because it's the perspective of somebody who knows Hashem is Baruch is to know that you are a, um, I was going to say virus, but that would be the wrong word. But you get the idea. You're microscopic. And he is infinite. And he sees the whole picture. When the Mashiach comes, we'll see the picture. Oh, we will say. Fine. In other words, you can't see it. So you have to, you, a, a basis of Muna is to know that I have to be willing and I'm able to say, I don't get this. I'm just me. I rely on Hashem. But there's an in-between stage. You've also got to know it's a step towards that conclusion out that there are teachers and Rebbe's and Rabonim and Rebbitsons who are greater than you and understand stuff that you don't get including Nomi. Rus's relationship with Nomi is one of a Talmidah to her Rebbe. And so when she says to her, go and do what I'm about to tell you, it must have repelled her and revolted her. 
So says the Alsha. And yet, um, she does it. However, it's important to point out, as we're going to see in the Alsha in a second, that when the, the demand to do this is made by Nomi, she doesn't throw it at her cold. She realizes this is a big sign, and she wants to, as it were, sweeten the bitter pill a little bit. Okay, so uh, let me read to you a little bit of the Alsha. So he says the following thing. Um, but Tom or Law Nomi, when it says, and Nomi spoke to her, the Hakti Mimer Sefer Zor Bakarsha Mishpatim. I have to introduce what the Zor says at the beginning of Sefer Mishpatim. Ki inin chayibum hu ki arishim heshir ruach min rucha ba'ishtai. So he wants to explain, the Zor wants to explain exactly how does yibum work. This is something we discussed before, so this is, there's no great chidush for you here, but let me read it, read it anyway. Ki inin chayibum, the purpose of yibum is, hu ki harishim that when the person that comes along to do yibum to his sister-in-law will recover the soul of his dead brother, and that soul of the dead brother will be born as the child, that the, the first child of the brother and his sister-in-law, and will be called after the, the dead brother because the soul will come back. That's the purpose of Yibam. It's Gilgal, reincarnation, um, as it were, within the family. Okay. And as we said before, in the, in the, that soul from the dead husband, who didn't have any children, in case anybody is watching this entire any time and is not familiar with Yibam, then guess what? Uh, it's if the brother died without a child to carry on, because then the husband could be reincarnated in his son or his grandson. But if there's no child, if the, if the line has been, and been breached, uh, then at that point, the dead husband will come back in the child and then carry on that way. So he says, and here's this, this Hebrew interesting word again, um, inside her, her, her womb, and the soul is waiting there to be reborn by the union, the physical union, now of his brother with his, his wife. The aim law manuch rag al ide hayibum, and there's going to be no comfort. Here's the word manuach again. There's going to be no comfort unless that occurs. But gam kasein lamala mechoch may emes he gam inyan boyas imrus me in yibum, and I've already cited. He says, although we haven't read it in our share, but when he went, they also comes into this previously that that boaz is not a brother of of machlon, but there's enough of a family familial collection uh, connection. For Yibam still to work if he marries Rus. But he deruach machlon he mekashkes because the, the soul of Machlon is rattling about, present within her within her womb. And from that, a child is going to be born called Oven who Obed who is Machlon. So that's point number one. But that's just a general introduction to how Yibam works, which I think we all know. But there's another point here. It says, "Oi, chains." Remember, the Sefer Zohar. The Zohar also says there an interesting concept about if that occurs. So the brother dies; he doesn't have any children, and his brother marries his wife, and he is now reincarnated in as the child that she gives birth to. Listen to what he says here: "Oi, chains." Remember, the Sefer Zohar shom ki o isha rishon abol That first child that comes from that second marriage. Alide Gilgul through reincarnation in Evor the Negro me Erchoi the Ishto Oila Kioisa Ishto Nasis Imoi. He is reduced, he is diminished by the fact that he's come back in that way because now he's come back when his wife is now his mother, whom he has to do exactly what she tells him, as opposed to his wife who was his equal. So, of course, that's diminishing. Um, good. Now he says something which I'm afraid is going to be perhaps uh, uh, um, a familiar concept to almost everybody. Mother-in-laws and daughter-in-laws. Mother-in-laws and, and sons-in-laws. But even though it's the, it is the butt of a thousand jolts or ten thousand jolts or maybe more, but halakhically that there is a reality. There is an assumption that there will be a certain tension between a mother-in-law and a daughter-in-law. Mothers-in-law, after all, gave, gave birth to that boy, 
and mothers find it more than fathers difficult to let go along has come the most perfect daughter-in-law perhaps in the world but sometimes still the mother-in-law finds it extraordinarily difficult to let go now i'm sure that doesn't apply to the people who regularly watch this share or partake in this share. However, it's the Gomorrah in Yuvomus famously says that this is, whereas the Yuvomus, Yuvomus Kufyud Zayn Omen Aleph, to such an extent, at such an assumption of a, a norm, a reality, that a mother in law is not allowed to testify against a daughter in law. Guess what she's likely to say? Guilty. Um, there is an assumption of things not going particularly well. Uh, on that basis, he says, you might think that the reason that uh, he that Nomi has told or asked Rus to do what she asks her, and I'll read to you, Baal Nomi Yiplo ki hakazona tas eskalosa. This is astonishing. Nomi has asked Rus to behave like a prostitute. Like a zoina. Go to the, the, the to Boaz's bed and jump into his bed. You might think, he says, that's the reason, because it's, it's, her, it's the mother-in-law. It's the mother-in-law. And that's what mother in laws do. Why? Because it's got, she's going to get her son back from this. And if the name of Rus is dirt, and they're going to say, Al Moab, the most sexually corrupt society in the world, one of their daughters, well, what would you expect? Or maybe she's doing it because to do Boaz a favor. But no, she's got no real concern then don't say that and don't think that. And that's why she says, by Tom or Law Naomi, that's why it says Naomi, it says the Al Shaq, why say Naomi? We know she's Naomi. Remember, Naomi means she was pleasant, she was the Tadekas, we talked about that. Chamoisa, why say her mother in law? Is to say that indeed she was the mother in law, which we know, but something, Chamoisa, Beatty, but not the Tom or Law Naomi, Chamoisa, her mother in law, Beatty, you my daughter. Don't you think that I'm asking you to do something which is going to be bad for you? Not at all. Now, let me read this little bit of the al to you. Maybe you, you think you could accuse her of saying that really Nomi was only interested in getting her son back. She didn't, again, she didn't care what happened to Rus. She Rus, but not for anything that would be good for Rus. Uh, it's just that I, I need to get her to get married in order to get my son back. Not that I really want, I'm caring about her. You know, I'm asking you, and that's at the end of the post, I want you have manoach, which is a euphemism for your dead husband coming back as your child. But it's to be good for you. And the Alfred says here, Yitav loch, be'etzem yoysem elibani. This will be greater for you more than my son. I want it to be good more for you more than my son. Now we're running out of time, but I, this next bit is absolutely astonishing and absolutely brilliant. But she still says, I want you to go to Boaz. Now, listen to this. I might just say this outside, but it's absolutely fabulous. Go to Boaz, do what you're supposed to do. Now this is interesting. She wants, as a consequence of this, uh, that, of course, Boaz is going to do Yibum with her and bring that child into the world, that her child into the world, the Mashiach into the world. And obviously, he is the head of the Sanhedrin. So for the head of the Sanhedrin, uh, number two to the king, as it were, uh, of, of the Jewish people, to marry a woman who is just months ago a member of Moab, the most disgusting nation in the world, and that's not the sort of shidduch that you would normally be looking for for the greatest rabbi of the generation. I think we would all agree. So listen to what he says here, because this is absolutely fabulous. He says, But in Naomi crafting circumstances, crafting that night, and risk going to, to Boaz the way that she wants her to go to Moab, it was done with great chokhmah. Why? That indeed, it would never be the case that any normal Giaris, a girl just from Moab a few months ago, would be in any way on the radar of anybody trying to make a shidduch for the greatest rabbi of the generation. She would not be worthy of marrying him. Ah, but Rus, Achas Hoyasan. But Rus was an achas. Rus was unique. 
the ain kamoho beyisagiris, and no person who ever converted to Judaism, including the Amma and, and, and all the rest, was 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 remember the little the little throne that sat she sat beside when she sat beside um, when she sat beside Shlom, uh, her, son, her grandson Shlomo Melech, and even Rochov, who achieved incredible things and an incredible lineage that came from her. Nobody was like this. Nobody was like this. Because the king, the Mashiach, is going to come from her. Because, as I did, I think, tell, tell you last week, because Rus, who comes from Moab, and Moab, who starts from the incestuous evening, the incestuous night, when the oldest daughter of Lot, then goes to her father's bed, Lashem Shemaim, not Moses. Rus was a Gilgal of Lot's oldest daughter. And now she's back to finish the job that she started of making sure that the trajectory of the line of the Mashiach is going to come to its fruition with the, with the birth of Dovid and Melech. So Nomi knows this. And Nomi says, if I go and I say to, to, Bo, uh, to Boaz, I believe that she is the one, the unique one that our Messiah says that from Moab will come one person who is going to be the Iker in the, in, in the journey of the, of, of the Mashiach. He might believe her, he might not. Remember, she wasn't sure. That's why she kissed her in the lips. Instead, she tells us to do this. Go to his bed. Get into his bed. When? Uh, wait, hide yourself until they finish the banquet, until they finish eating and drinking at the end of the harvest. Then wait till he gets into bed. Then go. Does that ring a bell? Does that ring a bell? Of course it rings a bell! That's precisely what Lot's oldest daughter did. And as we saw uh, in last week's year, she says to her sister, let's sleep with our father. Remember, I think nobody else is left in the world. There's no choice. Let's lie with our father in order that we bring from him Zera, not a child, but Zera, seed. Which seed? The unique seed. The seed which is totally different to any other, and that is the Mashiach. That was her Kavona. That's what she tried to do. And then, that's what now she's back to finish the job as Rus now. And Nomi's plan is that when she behaves precisely as she did when she got into bed with her father, when he wakes up, when Boaz wakes up and finds her there, and he's made the inquiries, and she knows, he might suspect as well that everything falls into place. This is precisely what we are learning is what you will get. I get this. This isn't just any Moabite woman. Just as Nomi suspected, this is the Moabite. That's why she's doing exactly what she did the last time. And I said, the apostle said, tell and she'll, and he'll tell you what to do. And he says, tell you what to do. I'll tell you what to do. Do nothing. Sleep here, then stay there. Do nothing. I will marry you. I will do you, but there's somebody ahead of me in the line. I have to negotiate that. And then, if it works out, then I will marry you. And that's our final shift. So next week, we'll come to that, how this all comes out in the end. The confrontation between Boaz and Plony Amoni. Um, and why he was not unwilling to, to chap this mitzvah for himself, which will conclude our five sheer uh, journey uh, and glimpse of the greatness of Rus, of course of Nomi, and indeed all of the greats of the most wonderful Megillah. Uh, if you're looking at the greatness of the Alshad, this is where it's revealed. Megillah Shrus, I hope to see you next week. Remember, if you want to share sponsors in somebody's name, please contact me at yy at rabbiyy.com. Have a great week, have a wonderful Shabbos, keep well and keep safe.